We're asked in the following sample problems to factor out the greatest common factor of each polynomial using the distributive property. We will then check our answers by multiplying. So looking at the first expression here, we have 15x plus 25. Well, we notice that 5 is a factor of both 15 and 25. We cannot pull out any x's since there is only one x present in the first term. And there are no x's present in the second term. So let's pull out a 5. Now the question becomes, 5 times what gives me 15x? Well, that's simple. 5 times 3 is 15. So 5 times 3x should give me 15x. Plus, 5 times what number gives me 25? Well, that's also 5. So now we have factored. So this was the answer we were looking for. Now to check. We will simply distribute back in, and we should obtain what we originally started with. So 5 times 3x, of course, 15x, and 5 times 5, 25. So we've checked that one. So now looking at the next example here, we have 12y minus 4. Again, y is only present in the first term, so we cannot factor out a y term. We look at 12 and 4. The greatest common factor here happens to be 4. So I will pull out a 4. 4 times what gives me 12y? Well, I know that 4 times 3 is 12y is 12. So 4 times 3y should give me 12y. Factoring out a 4 from this 4 here leaves me with 1. So minus 1 is what's left. Now we're going to distribute back in just to check and we obtain the following 12y minus 4 looking at the third expression here 50x squared minus 10x so what we do here is we will factor out the greatest common factor we notice first that there's an x term present in both so we can factor out the x term with the smallest exponent. In this case, the smallest exponent, when comparing, we have x squared and x. The smallest exponent will be x. So looking at the numbers now, 50x squared and 10x here. Well, we know that 10 is the greatest common factor for those numbers. So I'll factor out a 10. And again, as mentioned before, we'll factor out the x term with the smallest power. So in this case, 10x will be factored out. Now, my, I ask myself, 10x times what gives me 50x squared? Well, I know that 10 times 5 will give me 50. And x times x will give me x squared. So this must be 5x minus... 10x times what gives me 10x? Well, 10x times 1 should give me 10x. So there I have it. So I factored this as well. So now we're just going to double check our answer by distributing back in. And we should obtain what we had originally started with. So 10x times 5x, that's 50x squared and 10x times that minus 1 gives me minus 10x, which is what I had originally started with. Okay, So now that we've grasped the concept of checking our answer, we're simply going to factor the rest of these examples. So looking at x cubed plus 9x squared, our next expression, well, there's no number to factor out since I have 1 and 9, and the greatest common factor there for 1 and 9 here is 1. But I do have x terms present in both. And again, the same rule applies. We'll factor out the x term with the smallest power. In this case, we have an x cubed and an x squared. The smallest power being the x squared. So I can factor out an x squared here. So the question becomes, x squared times what gives me x cubed? Well, I know that x squared times x gives me x cubed. And let's see here, x squared times 
what gives me 9x squared? Well, I've already got that x squared present, so the only thing I'm missing is a 9. So then I have x squared times x plus 9, in parentheses. So I factored that. So this is my answer here. Looking at the next expression, I have 5x to the 5th minus 15x to the 4th plus 10x cubed. Okay, I notice again that the greatest common factor for all three numbers is a 5, since 5 goes into every one of them evenly. Now, we can pull out a 5, and then we notice there's x terms present in each. Well, again, the same rule applies. You want to pull out the x term with the smallest power. So we have x to the 5th, x to the 4th, and x to the 3rd. The smallest power being this right here, x to the 3rd. So I will pull that out as well. Now, 5x cubed times what gives me x to the 5th? Well, I've already got the 5 present. I've got x cubed. What I'm missing is x squared to get this x to the 5th. So really all it is is the difference. 5 minus 3, 2. So that's how I get x squared. Now, I have my x squared inside minus 5 times what would give me negative 15? Well, that's simple. A 3. Now, I have x to the 4th and x cubed. What am I missing? Well, again, the difference. 4 minus 3 is 1. So I'm simply missing an x plus 5x cubed times what will give me 10x cubed? Well, I notice I've already got my x cubed here. So the only thing I need to do is get 10. Well, 5 times 2 gives me 10. So I'm going to write a 2 here. So I have factored out using the GCF here. Now we'll look at the next two examples and we notice something really nice about them. We notice that what's present here are both x minus 1 terms. The binomial is being multiplied by both of these. So the greatest common factor in this case is this x minus 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write x minus 1 right here off to the side because both of these items are being multiplied by x minus 1. And now I'm going to look and see what I've got written off here to the sides. So I've got an x and a plus 2. Well, all I need to do is rewrite this then as x plus 2. And everything, of course, was multiplied by x minus 1. So this is my answer. So not much to it. It might look like a trick, but that's all we have to do. Now looking at the next example, we see that it is also quite similar. We see that both things here are being multiplied by a plus b. So let's look and see what's written beside it. Well, we've got an x squared here plus. Now notice there's nothing written here. But remember that there's always that 1 there that's invisible to us. But we know it's there. So here again, we will factor out a plus b since both things are being multiplied by that. And then what's left is this x squared plus that in invisible 1 that we just rewrote. So we factored. So we factored each of these using the greatest common factor. 